Hello Aries, welcome to your season. Happy astrological new year, happy solar returns, happy all sun connecting with whatever major planets you have in Aries. I personally love Aries season. For me, it's like seventh house stuff. So it's a very romantic time. There's a lot of goal setting. There's a lot of sightseeing and you know really strategizing and thinking about what we want, which I think everyone is kind of really feeling and needing after this really heavy kind of Pisces season that we just went through. Okay, Aries, let's go ahead and get into these cards. You just saw the shuff saw the shuffle. So let's go ahead and start with the page of coins because this represents your energy, specifically Aries. So if you're dealing with an Aries, I feel like they yeah, like y'all are taking on such a real soft quality. You know, there's that two sides of the coin with Aries. There's the real um, ram, go for it, go after it, you know, like let's bang horns together kind of deal. Um, and then there's the lamb quality of Aries as well, which is very soft, very innocent, very quiet, very supportive, very loving. You know, and I think that's kind of how you're coming into this. You're like, I have dreams for myself. But I'm also at a time where maybe it is best to really surrender and let the universe help me out, let the universe kind of do a lot of the heavy lifting. And let's just see how this goes. I, I think that there are goals on your plate. There are ideas and things that you want to create. And yet when it comes to the how, like how am I going to do this? I feel like you are kind of releasing that. You're releasing the weight of that solution and giving it up to the universe to help you know, guide you. Now, the the environment is the Empress, which I mean, I love. First of all, I just have to say, I really love this deck. It's very rare when I find a new deck that I'm like, oh my god, I love every single picture. But with this deck, I really do. Um, the Empress with this sort of pregnant belly, but the creation of the world, and and that's really where you're at. I think that's where a lot of people are at, and. What do you want your world to really look like? What do you really want to create and co-create? Because when you have the universe as your partner, when you have the, the grandness of the all-knowing behind you, there's really nothing that's impossible. And I have a feeling you're tapping into this sense of, I really could make that million dollars this year. Like that seems to be, you know, a possibility where I really could find that love of my life this year. I really could have my first child this year. I really could. I really could. I really could. And it's starting to sink in that these things that may have been very evasive for you are now becoming more and more tangible because you're accepting your responsibility on the energetic and the vibrational realms um, to actually make it happen. I think Aries is feeling a lot more optimistic after a real rough start of 2020. 2020 was a little bit slow coming in. It was daunting. There was all this stuff that really came out. And the very first card in the nine card block is that whole thing exactly, right? Um, actually, what I'm gonna do is people always say that they really like to see all the cards. I've been getting a lot of comments like that. So probably in this area here, I'm gonna put a picture of all the nine cards in the nine card block so you can see it. So we'll start off with the five of coins, okay? The five of coins is probably where you're coming into Aries season from as you approach your solar return or as the sun connects with your moon in Aries, if that's what you've got, or as it comes over your ascendant line, there could be that whole like, oh my God, just please let me let me get out of this five of coins state. The, the page of coins really is gonna serve you very well in this regard because it's the optimism that's needed and it's the willingness to really just try whatever. You know, like, yeah, I'll totally try whatever, you, you know, I need to in order to get me out of this five of coins place. I think you're in a very solution oriented mindset, which is good. But again, like I said, you're not so worried about the how you're letting the universe guide you. So you're experimental and very open 
right? We see the fool right next to it. I don't think you're afraid of this five of coins. It's not like this is a, a place that you're trying so hard to get away from. In fact, this fool energy is just kind of diving right into it. It's like, all right, well, we got this thing. We got this issue. We got this problem. Let's go ahead and just tackle it. Let's, you know, let's just dive in. And I don't see that there's any fear at all. Now, this five of coins energy really could be highlighted by the sun connecting with Chiron at the first degrees of your sign, because this is kind of the second aspect of this little camel hump that I talked about ad nauseum back in March, where we had the sun connecting with Neptune throughout Pisces season, which can really just oh, feel very daunting, very draining. And then we get like 10 days, 14 days of a little bit of a break. And then as the sun comes into Aries, we have the sun connecting with Chiron, which can kind of have similar effects. So this is going to be sort of the second opportunity back to back for us to really just deal with the things that are truly bothering us. Because as we approach this new astrological year, and we really do want to, you know, feel like we are actually in the creative position that we are in the director's chair you know what i mean like we are the architects we are the designers so if you really want to be in that place where you feel like you have some i'm not going to say control because i think that's the wrong word but where you have some say so in it you have to kind of go into this five of coins and really ask yourself you know why something bothers you so much where is the root of this where is the source of this and and is there anything that i can do through forgiveness or having compassion for someone else um, that can help me mend that can help me heal the fool seems totally up for the task and i think airy season especially as saturn enters into aquarius there will be some kind of a reckoning right and i don't mean that in a big scary biblical kind of you know armageddon kind of way but the reckoning that your um your actions and your state of mind will start to beget those positive results uh, the justice is sort of the overseer or the governor, if you will, of the laws of the universe. And he speaks both on the physical realm. You know, if there's an act that is committed, then there will be likely something that comes back. Um, or if there is a vibrational thought or an emotion that is emitted, then there will be things that come back as well. He oversees all. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, right? That's kind of one of the, like, what, the third laws of physics or something like that. And that goes physically and metaphysically as well. So you have to pay attention if you are optimistic about your five of coins, which it's hard to be optimistic about that because sometimes you're like, maybe you are having some financial issues. Maybe Pisces season was just really like Aquarius and Pisces season both. Maybe there was just some really weird stuff that happened or it was really hard for money to come through or, you know, love was just kind of real stunted your relationships. Maybe there was some of that going on for some of you. Well, this is the opportunity for you to say, I want to change it. And the justice card says, okay, well, you have the power of the universe behind you to do that. And what happens, right, as we can see down here with the lover's card, is that you actually beget positive results. Now, the lover's is positive communication first and foremost. Like before it's any connection with romance, this is a card of communication, okay? Uh, it's Gemini ruled and there's that talking it through, communicating, transforming thoughts and emotions into words, which are usable forms for other people, for us to be able to really interact with one another in a way that's productive, okay? There could be an element of choice, you know? Like when you go into that five of coins in in uh, in a state of, okay, let's let's not be burdened by this anymore. Let's take care of it once and for all. Uh, that can usually, you know, give birth to choices, choices for career paths, choices for financial options, choices for lovers, all those kinds of things. So if choices and options is something that you want, you got to go into that five of coins. And that's going to happen right at the beginning of Aries season, like right now, right, right when you're watching this video. So lovers is absolutely and literally in the cards for you. Okay, here it is. It's showing up. Lovers does represent a connection between two people. It absolutely can represent that. But again, I, I always like to bring it back into ourselves because I think ultimately a lot of the things that happen with outside of us are, again, <laughs> reasons because of what's happening inside of us. 
and we have this opportunity to realign. We have this opportunity to find unity within ourselves, our hearts and our heads moving in the same direction. We have a vision and we have a passion. Great. Let's do something with it. Let's just go after it. Lovers can be kind of aggressive. It is full of passion. It is full of drive. It is full of chemistry and connection, whether it's with a person or with a career thing or whatever. And so a lot of really amazing results can be had out of this and I think that's absolutely the case for those of you who have been really hoping and wanting for a new romantic situation to come into your life or a new creative opportunity for you to do the things that you love and to be the person you authentically are and also not have it hinder your lifestyle at all right to, to actually make money at it or to actually you know incorporate it into your day-to-day -day life that kind of thing there's absolutely an opportunity for you for that and we love the ace of cups because it's that overwhelming sense of fulfillment it's that overwhelming sense of joy and it has so many like good feels good vibes and it's that time when you like walk out in the springtime you're like oh my god the weather is so nice whether it's raining or sunshine doesn't matter you just have that kind of musical fairy tale kind of cinderella singing with the birds and all that kind of feeling and and there's there's a there's an essence of elation and feeling on top of the world when these two come out back to back like this and at this time, this is probably going to be when you actually start feeling the beginning of a new year. It is a new astrological year after all. So we'll give you that. It is a new year. And you'll start to say, okay, now I'm really ready to really step out there. I'm ready to go make the money. I'm ready to go fall in love. I'm ready to go, you know, have children and, and to begin the process. Again, don't worry so much about the how, right? Because the universe will show you how. It's more about the commitment to following your bliss, the commitment to not allowing all this negative stuff to be the reasons why you don't do something. Because you're moving away from it, you guys. You really are. You're moving away. I love this as as an indication of spiritual evolution all right and we go through many and many of these throughout the course of our lifetime we're always ascending we always have these little light bulbs that turn on and just kind of move us up that ascension ladder in terms of our awareness and yet here is another one you know you see six of six of swords and you move more into your bliss and i always say you know there's that smooth horizon there's that paradise on the other side of this choppy water which you can see down here and we want to be in that smooth glassy water that like perfectly reflects the sky right so there is no dis distinction between the sky and the water it's just all one and we feel so united we, we're really connected with our place in the whole big picture of everything everything moves smooth and clients come through and you have fun and you laugh and you smile and it's just like kind of that impossible place but it's, it is possible because you've decided that that's what you want, right? Remember the Empress. It's, it's, possibly be, it's possible because it's what you've decided that you want. And you're willing to do the work to achieve it. And you are willing to adjust your vibrational frequency to really match. Like, I always get so surprised, like, with all the information on the internet now. Like, the spiritual community is, like, on fire, right? And there's, like, millions of videos about law of attraction and manifestation and meditation and all this stuff. And yet there are still people out there who will be like, my life sucks. And they'll put comments or they'll do like nasty things and they'll say things to all these YouTubers or on social media or whatever without like they're watching this content and they're like sinking, like nothing is sinking in. And I still am like, how can you be watching this and nothing sinks in and nothing just like you're just not ready for it but you guys are ready for it right like to really step into that positivity um and because of that pisces in the 12th house you guys you really do have the benefit of that jupiterian neptunian you know sort of subconscious realm which is actually really beneficial in the world today because it's it's not everybody that gets to feel optimistic most of the time even when things are going real bad or when things are rough for some reason my aries are always those people that are like don't worry tomorrow will be better like don't worry you're so great don't worry it'll be fine and don't worry don't worry don't worry and and somehow they always bounce back you know and they're never really down for too long and then we have this page of wands which again amplifies the page of, of coins 
which is that very lamb-like energy. That's the thing is there's nothing aggressive about this month at all. Nothing. There is nothing um, too overwhelming. There is nothing too hard, you know. It's just a very soft opening to the year, but soft but big, you know. Soft but real big. One day at a time. I always say that with my pages. That's all you can do. And I think that's all you're willing to commit to. Let's just take it one day at a time. Let's just see how this goes. Let's not worry about tomorrow. You know, releasing the how part of this. How am I going to get there? How am I going to make this money? How am I going to fall in love? Mm -mm, don't worry, because the minute you start thinking about that kind of stuff is the minute that you start feeling that pressure. It's the minute that you start feeling that ego coming in and saying, well, if you don't have a solution, if you don't have a path, if you don't have an exact like to do list, then this is never going to happen for you. You have to be so, so, so careful. Because in the beginning, you know, you had so much optimism about, you know, taking care of all of this. And yet near the end of the month, as we approach Taurus season, you know, I think that there's just going to be a little bit more analysis of where you are energetically versus the physical reality. And you're going to say there's a gap here. <laughs> like I can do the law of attraction stuff or the manifestation stuff all day long, but I still don't have it. And you can get caught in that loop. And that's where people really, you know, really struggle. And that's why things don't happen for them is because they get so trapped in looking at the gap. Okay, between where they are. But when you have faith, as is always operating behind the scenes in, you know, the, the governor, here he is, he's coming out, um, really showing us that I think it's a girl. I never know if the justice card is a man or a woman. <laughs> to me, it looks like a guy. I don't know why. Um, but with the hair, maybe a girl. Uh, anyway, so when you have this justice energy, equaling everything out, you have to be able to sustain that high vibration for longer periods of time. You have to be able to keep the vision. You have to be able to stay in that director's chair, you know, because if a director of a movie all of a sudden says, well, this movie's not really working out and they just walk, well, then the movie's never going to really come to fruition, is it? No, it's not. So you have to stick with it. You have to be committed to the vision, be committed to the dream and to the life that you ultimately know is yours. But you have to be careful because there may be some naysayers out there as Mars moves into Aquarius as well. You know, it can have a, a detached effect and people might not necessarily be as passionate as you. And you may feel like you're kind of on this, all in this on your own or whatever. But it, again, it's how you really handle that. Just say, okay, well, then I'm on my own and I get to do it myself and then I don't have to worry about anybody else. So the devil is also a reminder that our hard work does pay off. You know, it's it's the, the, this five of coins, it wasn't for nothing. It wasn't just something that happened willy-nilly. It was something that was shaping us who we are so that we then could actually be the person that could have the thing that we want. Otherwise, maybe we just weren't ready. You know, you think you want a million dollars, but maybe the universe is like, well, I would love for you to have that million dollars, but I want you to be able to keep it too. So you have to be able to be prepared for, to have that. So five of coins, circumstances, periods of anxiety, periods of loss, difficult relationships, all those things, you know, they're, they're teaching and learning opportunities so that we can handle the things that we ultimately want. So the devil comes out here, but even right next to the high priestess who's whispering in your ear saying it's okay. It's okay, like just keep going, just keep doing it. It's that little, you know, Thomas the engine. I think I can, I think I can, I, I can, I can. And just kind of, it, it just snowballs. Because the high priestess always speaks to uh, kind of like a surfacing from our subconscious. And when we have negative things coming up from like childhood or whatever, she has the wherewithal to say, this is worth listening to. This is not worth listening to. Like you can have negative stuff come in your head, but it depends on if you give it credence, if you attach to those thoughts or not, right? Are you going to attach to the thoughts or are you going to just let them pass you by? High Priestess wants you to pass, let negativity pass you by. She wants you to expand. She wants you to grow. She's here as kind of a silent bystander who's there to assist 
you know, whenever you need assistance. She doesn't usually come into your rescue. She's just always there. She's always kind of lurking around, kind of in, you know, that sounds a little creepy, but she's always around. And when you get even just a little bit off track, she'll make sure that something happens in your life that's like, pay attention. Sometimes there can be uh, synchronicities with the numbers. Sometimes there can be little things that pop up on your social media and you're like, oh my God, I was just thinking about that. Or just a random video that you would never think to click on and all of a sudden you're feeling compelled to click on it because there's that one little, you know, 20 second clip in there that you've been needing to hear. So just, you know, you have to be open, all right? Now I'm gonna do things just a little different than what I normally do. I already pulled out the the Oracle card. So let's go ahead and finish this off. Um, with the energy oracle. So first card that came out was anxiety, which I think has a lot to do with the Pisces, the theme of Pisces season and kind of that feeling of maybe there was a little bit of emptiness or maybe there was just a little bit of drainage and things just weren't happening. It has such a theme of Pisces, right? It's just so like everything you thought was gonna come to fruition, it just doesn't. And it just can be so weird and so strange sometimes. Don't get too wrapped up into this. This is kind of even that devil energy coming out and saying, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. You don't have to be so worried about the gap between where you are and where you're hoping to be. Keep going down the path. This is a non-productive use of energy, anxiety. It's just simply something that is not needed, like not even in the least little bit. You don't need it. You don't need to give credence to it. You don't need to spend time here. The minute you start feeling anxious about something, I would highly recommend going out and just doing something that you are really passionate about because it's your passion that pays this month. It's your passion that brings the stuff in. That is your magnet. That is your source of magnetism, all right? Your passion is the source of magnetism. Keep that in mind. And then we have, interestingly enough, with the astrology card, we got the Mercury retrograde, which is over now. It's been over for a couple of weeks now, and there's really not a lot of reason to, like, to not really tap into that reinvention of who we are hoping to reinvent ourselves to be. Because during the Mercury retrograde, that is, I mean, Mercury retrograde always makes us reconsider to look at something again, to refresh how we do things, to kind of change formats, to do X, Y, and Z or whatever. And, you know, it's about really keeping those things going because you can kind of reinvent yourself a little bit and, and change your path a little bit. But if you go back to how it was before, then you're just always going to get the same results. So Mercury retrograde here is reminding you that you had to reinvent yourself for a reason. You had to go through that period of time, the past couple of months of just really considering how you were doing things. And if you go back to that same course, then you will hit up against that devil energy. It's not what anyone's trying to get you to do, right? We all really, really, really want you to be here which is like the best place to be. And this is what this was all about. The Mercury retrograde was specifically about getting you into that Empress seat, getting you into that creative energy. Okay. So really beautiful reading for you guys. Um, I'm going to put the camera down now so you'll be able to see the comprehensive cards if you want to uh, get more information. Um, we'll, sometimes during these comprehensives, some like really interesting things comes out and we get a whole bunch of little tidbits here and there. Uh, so there could be more things that could be useful to you, especially pertaining to the five of coins and that devil energy. So let's go ahead and put the camera down. See you in just a sec. Okay, you guys. So here you can see how all the cards are laid out. I'm going to go ahead and do something a little different than what I normally do. I'm going to clarify these two cards with additional cards from the same deck. So let's look at this page of coins here. What is her deal? What more information do you need to know about this page of coins? Which is really you and, and how you're coming into this month and kind of the energy that you'll be taking on. Four of Swords. Okay, yeah, like I said, it's very soft, it's very rested, it's very innocent, and ooh, and four of wands, beautiful, but also optimistic and celebratory. So now let's take a look at this empress. We 
have the nine of coins, beautiful, which is full of abundance, full of self-worth, full of creative, creative ideas. And six of coins. See, you're in this really cool place where a little bit of effort is really going to go a long way, which is really fantastic. Okay, so again, for those of you who are new to my channel, these will be covered in the comprehensive reading. The link will be down in the description box down below. We'll talk for like another, whoops, hold on. Not going to take any of those, hold on. Um, we'll talk for another 20 to 25 minutes about it, about all these cards here. So five of coins, let's take a look. Oh, another four of swords. Okay, tower. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying you weren't working during Pisces season. It's just maybe there was just a little bit of a slowdown. Yeah. Nine of cups. Excellent. King of swords. Wonderful. I like this to have your ruling planet in Aquarius, it's like the Mars and Aquarius energy coming out there. Oh, he came out anyway, so there you go. I do think there's going to be a lot of work for you this month, you know, but it's going to be things that, ooh, double lovers, look at that. I think you're just going to have a lot going on. Okay, whoops, Ace of Cups, okay, Three of Cups, another Empress, there we go. For those of you who don't want to get pregnant, I would highly recommend using birth control. If you are wanting to get pregnant, it's very likely that your fertility is pretty high at this time. Okay, Page of Wands. See, that's three of swords really acts as a fuel, you know, that kind of five of coins, that pain, the sadness and all of that. It really can be one of the best things because it, it does motivate us to create better things for ourselves, create better lives, to create better circumstances and situations. Okay, there's the devil there. Okay, so this is where we will pick up in the comprehensive. Again, the link will be down in the description box down below if you want to join. Thank you guys so much for everything. I wish you absolutely an amazing airy season. Happy birthday if it's solar return for you guys. And that's it. Thank you so much. Take care.